Thank you, church family, for joining me tonight on our Wednesday night Bible study. I hope everyone's had a, a few good days of rest and fun. And I hope you all are all safe and warm tonight. And we look forward to seeing you Sunday morning in the house of the Lord as we come together and worship God. Be praying for that and expecting God to do great things. Uh, tonight we're going to continue our Bible study in the book of Matthew. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 4. So hopefully you got your Bible with you and you're ready to dig into God's Word. I'm really excited about this lesson tonight. Matthew chapter 4 Verse 1 says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Uh, so when I, I read that, I thought, man, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. That, that kind of sounds crazy. Uh, how many are led by the Spirit of God? The Bible says those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. He, he says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Uh, so God orders our steps. I, I know we sometimes make bad decisions and we wind up maybe in a bad place in our life, but Jesus was being led by the Spirit and was led into the wilderness to be tempted. So if, if Jesus had a wilderness experience, we probably will so. We, we probably will also. Uh, we will, even though the life um, in life that we're trying to do right, we're trying our best to be obedient, to be led by the Spirit. We will still find ourselves having wilderness experiences from time to time. We'll go through seasons of drought, of dryness in our lives, uh, maybe even wandering. And we will be tempted. The book of James says the devil will try to draw you away, entice you, and to tempt you. Now listen to me. God, he, he don't tempt us. He don't tempt you. He, he don't try to draw you away. Matter of fact, God always tries to draw you to him. So Jesus was tempted. And the Bible says that he was tempted and always like man, yet without sin. But the Bible also says that he became sin, that knew no sin, that we might become the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. So Jesus was tempted. Uh, so we, we know that uh, we will be tempted. Being tempted is not sin, but can lead to sin. Uh, that's, that's why we have to pray and live by the Lord's Prayer and say, Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Uh, we have to believe Jesus will lead us in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Uh, that's why we must walk and live in the Spirit so we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So let's keep reading. Verse 2, and it says, And when He had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards He was hungry. So He had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. I imagine uh, on His man side, on His fleshly side, He was weak. He was very hungry. Uh, he, he might have been weak physically, but he was strong spiritually. Uh, and I truly believe that's what fasting does, uh, is make us strong spiritually. Uh, the Bible says that after he was tempted, that he came back uh, from fasting in the, in the power of the Spirit. And I truly believe that's what fasting does us. When we fast and we pray and when we seek God's face, uh, when, we, when we're done with the, that fasting, that we, we had the power of the Spirit living and operating more fully in our lives. So the devil tried tempting Jesus in what he thought was his weakest moment. Uh, the devil will try to tempt you in your weakest moment. Uh, when you're vulnerable, upset, mad, lonely, depressed, maybe carnal, uh, fleshly, not, not thinking right. Uh, maybe you had a, foul, a fight with your spouse or you feel like you've been neglected or not loved or not appreciated. Uh, someone else shows you some attention or affection. I want you to know that that's the devil. Now, flee from even the appearance of evil. Give no place to the devil, the Bible says. Well, we know the devil, if he could have gotten Jesus to sin, uh, maybe to give into his fleshly desires, into his human nature side, he could have destroyed God's plan of salvation and redemption. Uh, the, the devil tried to draw Jesus away, but he said, uh, but he had no pull on him. Even though Jesus had a flesh body, he had, he had his body under control. He had his flesh under control. So Satan had nothing to work with. Satan had, Satan had nothing to draw him away with or enticing with. And I truly believe that that's why we have to die daily. If God's mercy is new every day, then that means also that we should probably have to die to ourselves, die to our flesh, our wants, our carnal nature, our, our habits, our hang-ups, that we have to die to that every day so Satan will have nothing to draw us away or entice us with and pull us away. So the devil still tries to tempt us and draw us away to destroy our lives, our homes, our marriages, our, our ministry, our reputation. 
Uh, when he comes to draw you away or entice us, uh, do we give him plenty to work with? Have we got our flesh uh, under subjection, our, our carnal desires under control? Or do they control us and draw us away? Th- does your lust get the best of you? Does your temper get the best of you? Th- does your greed get the best of you? Uh, the-, the list can go on and on. Uh, or or, or that- That's why we got to walk with God and to change our lives. It seems like every time somebody makes a decision to do that, uh, whenever you desire more of God, here comes the devil. Temptations, hurts, hurtful words. Uh, something will happen to you to, uh, to try to stop you or discourage you or distract you or even destroy your life because the devil does not want you going on with God. He does not want you to have more of God. He does not want you to be used by God. So he'll try to do everything he can to draw you away and to tie you and, and to do something bad in your life. So we have to be aware of that. Keep doing right. Keep, keep being obedient to the Word. Keep being and operating in the Spirit and walking in love. And, and you will come out of that and return in the power of the Spirit, I truly believe. Let, let's keep reading. Verse 3. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones be become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, so the first thing that the devil tempted him with was food. And I truly believe it's the lust of the flesh. Uh, bread. Could you believe that? Jesus could have ate any time he wanted to. Uh, he, he, could have, he could have uh, turned stones into bread. He, he could have just called down for, uh, he could have called for bread and it would have appeared. So he could have ate any time he wanted to. But he tempted the bread of life with bread. It, it's kind of ironic. The, the, the devil thought... Well, maybe he hasn't eaten in 40 days and 40 nights. He's hungry. He will do anything for food. I mean, that's how the devil deceived the first Adam and Eve was with food. Also, he, he, I believe he, he led Esau away. Esau lost his birthright because he was hungry for food. Don't let your God be your belly. I'm talking about your fleshly appetite for the things of this world uh, to pull you away and to make uh, to make uh, you make a bad decision for temporary fulfillment, for temporary satisfaction. Now I remember uh, another time that Jesus was hungry. Uh, him and his disciples that uh, they had been on their missionaries' journeys. They've been going and, and starting churches, and they've been healing the sick and raising the dead and and doing mighty and great things. And they was tired. They was worn out. They was hungry, and, and they came to Samaria. And, and the disciples went into town to buy food. But as Jesus sat there waiting on him, uh, a woman in that town came to a well. And Jesus began to minister to her. And he loved on her. And he, and, and he taught her. And I, I truly believe that he changed her life. And when the disciples came back, they found Jesus. And, and they was getting ready to prepare food. And Jesus didn't eat. And they thought, has, has somebody brought him food? Does, does he have food that we didn't know about? And, and that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I have food that you know not of. His food, His nourishment, His fulfillment was to do the will of the Father. And I believe that what, that's what gave Jesus strength. Jesus is the bread of life. He is the living water. Uh, we need to look to Him for our physical and our spiritual needs. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Uh, we, we know that Jesus is a true manna or the true bread from heaven. So yes, we have to have physical bread to eat, but also we have to have the the spiritual bread. We have to have the Word of God living in us and operating through us uh, and Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Uh, The second way that that Jesus was was tempted was with the pride of life. Let's keep reading in verse 5. Matthew 4, verse 5. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, listen to that, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. So the devil, uh, the devil now begins to do what he does best, to make us question ourselves. He, he makes us question the Word of God. He tries to bring in doubt. He tries to make us... Uh, uh, to, to, make us, to make us prove ourselves. If, do you see that? If, if you be the Son of God. The, the, devil, knew, the devil knew that Jesus was the Son of God. He, he, he knew that and he was trying to get Jesus uh, to give in to his flesh. Uh, he was hoping in his flesh, in his carnal man, uh, that, that he would maybe have a little bit of pride there, just like the devil had pride, and that pride would make him do something that, that God didn't want him to do. 
He says, prove it. If you be the Son of God, prove it. Uh, ever, uh, everybody, uh, prove, prove to everybody in this glorious, this miraculous way. Uh, jump off this mountain and let us see if an angel comes and saves you. Then everybody will know that you are the Son of God. The, the devil said it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you unless you dash your foot against a stone. The, the devil will always twist the word, uh, just like he did with Adam and Eve. But Jesus said, it is also written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So even though the devil tried to trick him and, and to try to deceive him to get him to jump off that mountain, Jesus said, it is also written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. The, the third way that he was tempted, I truly believe, is with the lust of the eyes, or which also I believe works with pride. Uh, if, if, you give what, if you give yourself what your eyes can see, uh, sometimes your eyes can get us in trouble. Uh, sometimes we see things and want them, and uh, and, and we, do, we we don't need them like sin. Uh, I remember we just got through talking about Samson in our last Bible study, and Samson he said he seen a woman of the Philistines, and it pleased him well. What what he seen? His eyes, his, his flesh, his carnal nature got him in a lot of trouble. Uh, th this makes the third time the devil came to tempt Jesus. How many knows the devil don't, don't quit or, or just give up easy? He'll, he'll try to tempt you. He'll try to come and, and entice you and draw you away. It almost seems like on, the, on a daily basis. So let's keep reading verse 8. And again, the devil took him up uh, on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. Verse 10, Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. The, the devil had dominion over the world. Uh, he, the Bible says that he is the God of this world. He could have given him the world. Oh, but Jesus knew that one day that he would be the God of heaven and of earth. Uh, but first, he must suffer and die for sinful man to redeem us. Then he would go into the, to the deep part of the earth, make an open show of the devil, take back the keys of, of death and hell. That, that means he took back dominion uh, from the devil uh, because that's what man lost. When man gave in to sin, they gave up their d dominion. They gave up their place on this earth. And that's how the devil became the god of this world. And after that, Jesus led captivity captive. Jesus knew that he had to do all that before he could get the dominion back. Satan has always wanted to be God. He has always wanted to be worshipped like God. Uh, the Bible says that he is a God of this world. So he wanted Jesus, God, to worship him. But Jesus said, You shall worship the Lord God, and him only shall we worship. Him only shall we serve. It, it reminds me of, of another story in the Bible, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they refused to worship an idol or a false god, and they only worship God. Do, do we ha have idols or, or false gods in, in our life and in, in this world that we worship? Uh, we might not bow down to them or, or sing to them, but do we spend more time and energy and money on the pleasures of this world? Ha has the world and the love of its pleasures become our God? Let's keep reading verse 11. Then the devil left him... Uh, and, and another translation says, and the devil left him for another opportune time or for another time that he was going to come back and tempt him again. But the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Angels came and ministered to him. I, I believe that they fed him. Uh, they gave him bread and water. They uplifted him. They encouraged him. Uh, they, they ministered to him. It reminds me of the story of Elijah. Y'all remember when he, uh, he, he had just won a great victory over 400 of Baal's prophets. Uh, he was tired. He was worn out. He was exhausted physically and mentally and emotionally to the point of wanting to die. And the angels came and ministered to him, and they brought him some bread and, uh, uh, and some water, and they encouraged him, and they spoke into him and to his life. And I'm so glad that when we are weak and when, when we are tired and, and we're drained physically and spiritually, that we have that living water. We have the bread of life on the inside of us that can encourage us, that can strengthen us, so that we can go on in our journey with the good Lord. Verse 12, let's keep reading. Now when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee... And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, the regions of Zebulun and, and, and Naphtal, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, that it might be fulfilled, that was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. It's amazing how many times that we've, that we've heard that word in our studies. Uh, how much you see that word throughout the Scriptures um, 
all these things must happen uh, to make Jesus go into a certain way or do a certain thing and so that the prophecies be fulfilled. We know that Jesus would, they was out to get him. They, going, they seek to destroy his life. And that's why he went into Nazareth. And why, why did he do that? So the prophecies could be fulfilled. So every time uh, Satan tries to do something in, uh, in Jesus' life to destroy his life, really all he's doing is bringing scriptures and prophecies to fulfillment in his life and, and just showing and proving that Jesus is truly who he says he is, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Let's keep reading. Verse 15 the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region in the shadow of death, light has dawned. They had seen a great light. It's been 400 years of silence, uh, 400 years of spiritual darkness, if you will. Uh, they've had, they have heard uh, they haven't heard anything from the prophets or anything, but angels appeared and a great, a great light shone about them uh, and they were surrounded by a heavenly hosts. Uh, we know that Jesus is light. We know that He is the light of the world. We know that one of these days He's going to be the light of heaven. Well, we know that He appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus as a great light, as a brilliant light. And, and we know that He has taken us out of darkness, the Bible says, into His marvelous light. The, the true light has dawned a new day. Uh, people knew Jesus was something special. They knew that He was light, that He was love, that, uh, that He had all power and authority, that He was the Son of God, that they knew that He was who He claimed to be. Let's keep reading verse 14. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, th th there's been a constant theme throughout the Bible from the, from the major prophets to the minor prophets that we just uh, studied not too long ago uh, to, to John the Baptist and now to Jesus and, and that is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, and I truly believe it's the same message for today. I believe that us as people in this world that we're living in, it, it's so wicked, it's so perverse, it has turned from God, it has turned away from Him and His Word and the Holy Scriptures and, and we need to repent. We, we, we need to turn from our sins and turn back to Him and, and, and pray out to Him and cry out to Him and let Him heal us but also heal our nation. I believe that's the only thing that's going to bring God back is when we repent and truly turn our lives back to Him and over to Him. Verse 18, see, just like then, uh, some uh, were hearing the message of repent and turn to Jesus. You know, some, some will hear the message of repentance and, and turn to Jesus, but some will not. Uh, but salvation has been made available to everyone that will believe. Verse 18, and Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Wow, so, so, so much in these couple of verses right here. Jesus handpicked his followers. The Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. He, he knew exactly who they were, uh, the, their background, their, their status in the community, the, their weaknesses, their strengths, their personalities, their profession. All of his disciples, he, he knew all about them. Jesus didn't just see them for who they were, but he saw them for who they could be. He said, follow me. Matthew just, just gives us a little detail in this, uh, but I truly believe it had to be something special for them just to forsake their families, their livelihood, their jobs, and follow him. Luke uh, gives us a little bit better reason, more of a, a snapshot. Uh, we, we know, hopefully we know the story, that they had been fishing all night, they haven't caught anything, and they was on the, uh, on, on the banks mending their nets, and Jesus came to them and, and asked them if he could get in their boat, and they pushed off a little bit from the sea, and Jesus taught the people there. Then after he taught them with great authority and power and knowledge, he says, let's go out a little bit further and let's put your nets down for a catch. And Peter said, hey, we've been fishing all night, we haven't caught anything. But he said, but at your word, we'll do it. And they put down their nets, and we know that they began to catch a great multitude of fish, and so much that their nets began to break, and they had to call their partners over to help them get all the fish in. Then after that, when they got up on the bank, Jesus says, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. After they seen that great miracle, they, they knew that it had to be something special, uh, that, that it had to be from God, and, and they left everything, and they followed Him. And I believe that God still calls us today to follow Him. Follow, follow His Word, His teaching, His example, His Spirit. Later, even Paul would say, follow me as I follow Christ. 
And I truly believe that we are still fishers of men. We are still catching men and, and letting God, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, to, 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 to clean them, uh, to forgive them, to heal them, to restore them, and then fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit and use them to catch even more fish, even more men or mankind. Let's keep reading verse 20. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother in the boat with Zebedee, his, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately they left their boats and, and their father, and they followed him. We're going to learn here, we're going to see in just a second in this next verse, that they were the partners that they had a call for to, to come and help them get all the, the, the fish in. And they saw the miracle too. They, they seen the hand of God uh, that was on Jesus' life. Look at verse 23. And Jesus went about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. So Jesus was tempted for 40 days, came back in the power of the Spirit. He started putting His team together. It's kind of like the, the, the transfer portal. He started putting His team together. He, he was getting... Uh, the ones that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, they, they all wanted a rabbi. They all wanted someone to follow. And if you didn't have someone to follow, that means you was a reject, that nobody wanted you. So Jesus, uh, he, he took the ones that nobody wanted, that nobody liked, that everybody overlooked. And, and, and them are the ones that became his disciples, that became his followers. He was teaching the word with love, with power and authority, with great wisdom and conviction. Uh, he was healing people from all kinds of diseases and sickness, setting people free. And, and, and I still believe that He's doing that today. I still believe that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, that He changes not. And, and look what happened in verse 24. Then He said, Then His fame went throughout all of Syria, and they brought to Him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, and uh, uh, epilepsies, and, par uh, and uh, people that was paralyzed, and He healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from uh, De uh, De Depicolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. His fame went throughout the land. Everyone heard of this man named Jesus. All the miracles that he performed, the, the sickness, the disease, and the devils had to go when Jesus showed up. He healed the sick. He opened the blinded eyes. He made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. He, he raised the dead. And people came from everywhere to hear Him, to see a miracle, and also if they needed a miracle. They heard Him speak in their synagogues. How, how could people doubt? How could the Pharisees and the Sadducees doubt that He, he was who He said He was? That, that They even said nobody can do these types of miracles unless they be of God or from God. But yet the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders of the day, they did not believe that He was the Son of God. People, even today, after all the clear evidence of history, of church history, the, the, the consistency of Scripture uh, over all the different authors, uh, over all the many, many years, and it all comes together in perfect unity. And then on top of that, the millions and millions of life people uh, of lives that has been changed and saved and set free... Um, and we, that we see now all over the world, and yet you still have atheists, you still have people that don't believe in Jesus or who He is and who He claims to be. I, I'm believing if we have Jesus, the Holy Spirit, in our house, um, and that we're teaching the Word of God, the multitudes will come and be ministered to Him. And that's what I've been praying for our church, that God send a revival, God send an awaken. I, I want the Holy Spirit of God uh, so strong and so uh, uh, real and tangible in our life and in our church that people's lives will be changed and set on fire and set free for the glory of God. And I, I believe when people are ministered to, when, when people's lives are changed, the multitudes will come. And so I want you to pray with me. So let's close in prayer. That's all of Matthew chapter 4 tonight. And uh, thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you have a, a great night, and hopefully we'll see you Sunday morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll end in prayer. God, I love you. I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, God, for your spirit. God, I, I thank you, God, for the people that has, has tuned in to watch tonight. I, I pray, God, that you give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And I pray, God, that you just be with the ones, and uh, God, that are sick, that are, that are shut in. And I, I know this has kind of been a difficult couple of days, being locked in the house and not able to do anything. For, for some, it's probably been a, a great time. But I pray that you just be with us, God. Help us, 
to, to be fishers of men. God, help us to follow you, to follow your word, to follow your example. Help us to be the light of the world. God, help us to be difference makers, world changers in which we live in today. God, help us carry the good news to everywhere we go, to share the love of God, to tell somebody about the goodness of God. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads man's heart to repentance. God, thank you that you that you found us faithful. God, thank you that you called us all into the ministry. God, help us to be about the Father's business. God, to add to your kingdom daily. God, we thank you for the privilege, the honor to serve you, to, to live for you, and to be called your son and your or your daughter. We just give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, and we love you.